We are here in beautiful Red Hook, Brooklyn, in the backyard of Popina, and today we are going to turn a cow's stomach into a sandwich. What kind of sandwich, friends? A lamprodotto. This is a traditional sandwich in Florence, Italy that we've both wanted to try. Let's do it now. Traditionally, for the lamprodotto in Florence, they would use the four stomach. Um, but the four stomach's tough to find here. One, it takes a lot of work. Uh, small farmers that you know most people like to work with that you guys champion don't necessarily have the resources to produce it. It's worth shouting out that like all of us were trying to find a fourth stomach and like coming from restaurant angles and butcher angles, like we can't find it in the US. I mean, I, I went to Chinatown, they didn't have it. Yeah. I mean, like, if you can't find something in New York Chinatown, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you're not gonna find it. You're not you gonna know? find it. Do you know why it is that Italians in Florence like the fourth stomach? It is very similar to Quinto Cuarto of the Jewish ghetto in Rome, which is basically all the entrails, right? I think the fourth stomach was probably the most difficult to harvest, and it was the least attractive to anyone that had any sort of monetary value attached to their family, which means it's the smelliest. It's the smelliest, it's funkiest, like the funkiest, cheapest thing you exactly. can get. Exactly, so it's inexpensive, Yeah. it's extremely healthy. So there's a lot of good things behind it, if you uh -huh. can just get past like, the smell and the fun, which I personally enjoy. So. <laughs> We've all looked at recipes and they all count, like say that you should be blanching this before you braise it, because that'll leach out some of the impurities. And we have made a decision we are not doing that. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure they're just trying to like appeal to our American sensibilities of like, mild. not so funky, mild, right? Mild, exactly. Mild. Yeah. But one of the great things about the tripe is that it is funky, right? And we want, uh, like you said, we want to get as close to that Lambert as we can. Uh, the same way you, you would find it on down some alley or on some side street in Florence. So we're going to make the Lambert but we're going to do it in two ways. Okay. One, we're going to do it as close to the tra traditional way as we can. So it's just going to be tripe that's been braised, a little bit of wine, mirepoix, tomato. And then secondly, we are going to do it some on the grill. I'm super excited to grill tripe. I've never even heard of that before. So we got our, our raw boys here. Yeah, so this is the raw tripe. We're gonna keep some for the grill and some for how we would the traditional way. So okay. wherever we can get like big flat pieces, like you said right here, then I would just get the flat piece and we'll just sit it to the side. So we know that's a grill piece. Great, okay. And then like over here where it's kind of, where it's shorter and you see that. There's a chamber. Exactly. Chamber there. We can just cut it up into smaller pieces. We're just gonna kind of clean it up a little. We're gonna to try to make it as even as possible and make it just so it can kind of like fit in the pan comfortably. Yeah, because we want it to all cook evenly. So how do you normally attack this? I would normally have like a butcher's knife and kind of go under like this, but. Yeah, I think I would just focus more on just squaring it up. Just, oh, okay, you square know? it up. So more like just cutting this. Yeah. Oh, and then because okay. we can still braise it separately, it's just gonna take a little bit longer. The stomach does not like to be cut up. So I'm gonna clean off some of this and then this just kind of wanna fillet it open a little bit. This really is like a new experience, like running a whole animal butcher shop. You're talking about like using every piece all the time. Yeah. These are like pieces we don't even have access to. Got enough to braise, so I think we're, we're good to go. This is not much mirepoix for the amount of tripe that's gonna go into it. It's like gonna add a little bit of sweetness. Exactly. And that's it. Because you don't want it to be vegetal. You want it yeah. to be tripey. But I think that's important is like we want it to stay funky. Like that's why we're here. So first we're gonna crush the garlic cloves, sweat them in a little bit of oil just until they become fragrant, smell them, perfume. Gotcha. Go in with the mirepoix. Okay. Saute for you know one or two minutes. Pinch a chili flake, immediately with the tomato so the chili doesn't burn. Of all the cooking methods, like why braising as the preferred cooking technique here? So when you were cutting it up and you were feeling it, it's like you can't pull it apart. Yeah. It's kind of tough to cut through. If you imagine chewing that up, it would be super unpleasant. So just like if you're taking, you know, a tougher cut of meat, low and slow, it helps break down, you know, all the enzymes and the proteins that are in there and helps just make it more enjoyable, chewable, and more delicious. I don't know if it's just because we've been talking about like Italian dishes all day, but this this really does look like a pasta dish coming together with like a, like a carbonara with like the egg yolk and the cheese all like kind of congealing and molding into one. Yeah. But it, it looks extremely Italian right now. All right, we got the sauteed traditional. Let's take the big guys and put them on the grill. So I think if we can get them this side first, 
and then have them dry out on the top a little. I think the combo of braising and grilling offal is especially cool. Offal is usually a tough sell in general, but grilling anything, it's like, you want people to eat vegetables, grill them. <laughs> like, oh, it's so, it's so easy because it's so good. But getting char on this, I think, is gonna make it unique and like to totally palatable. I think like this is a good way to get someone to eat tripe is to just put it on a BLT. If you want to get an American to eat opal, put it on a BLT. It's a good intro. All right, we're gonna to toast off this ciabatta, slice some tomatoes, build a sandwich. Love it. Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't even need to taste it to know how good that is. Look at that. I've never for a second even thought about having a grilled tripe sandwich, much less a grilled tripe BLT, but f that looks good. Let's eat these sandwiches. Start with traditional? I think so. I gotta tell you guys, I've been wanting to get to Florence for years just to eat this sandwich. Try to get my wife to drive from Rome to Florence. So excited to try this. <laughs> There's a reason why that is such a legendary sandwich. It's not opaly at all. Like all that initial stench that we had of like uh, of intestines like that we use for sausages is like gone. After talking at length about <laughs> how gross this thing actually is. It's pretty mild. Isn't it's it? so freaking delicious. It's nice that it has that oily tomato braise flavor. The salsa verde just like perks it up. The parts is huge, right? Also, the cool thing about tripe is that like, I don't know, the texture might weird you out on its own, but on a sandwich there's nothing strange about this. Okay, we gotta try the girl tripe BLT. It looks like an eggplant parm. It kinda does. Yeah. Oh, that one looks. It's like there's four layers of bacon, but with a sweet tomato braise. It's got great texture to it, like, but it's a nice thin piece of grilled meat, so it's just texture, so much flavor. Yeah, I feel, I feel like this one's kind of like, it's cut small to kind of avoid maybe what you would consider like a, like if you're an American, like you might not agree with it as a texture, but that one's embracing it and grilling it, I think just brings it out more. So do you think you still need to go to Florence to try this sandwich? Well, now I need to go to Florence because I need to know if it's actually that good, because <laughs> that's incredible. <laughs> then you know if the OG is as good as this one. All right, let's finish these. Okay.